All right, so let's try and get some clarity here. We have Delaware Senator Chris Coons. He's a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and supports a potential Joe Biden run. Senator, thank you for being here. Thank you. Greg. I want to talk about the reasonable expectations of what could happen with this Benghazi testimony mm -hmm. that the uh, former Secretary of State is going to give. But let's talk a little Joe while mm -hmm. I have you here. Okay. Um, you immediately stuck a big pin in my balloon saying, I am not here to tell you <laughs> what the Vice President is going to do. But let's do, two, let's do this two ways. First, if we look at this recent poll, uh, there is a little bit of attrition, a little bit of slipping on should the vice president run. There is a high index of satisfaction with the field, according mm -hmm. to the recent poll. Seventy percent say fairly or very satisfied. Uh, how does this inform what you think the best thing is for the vice president to do? Well, I think the vice president is going to make a decision here that's really based on what's best for his family. Uh, he and his family continue uh, to deeply mourn the loss of their talented, uh, very special son, uh, Bo Biden, who was our attorney general, uh, who passed away earlier this year. Um, and I know that if Joe Biden had been on that debate stage, if he gets into this race, it'll change all of the numbers that we just saw in the poll. Um, the one thing he's got as the sitting vice president, as someone who served in the Senate for 36 years, is an undeniable record as one of America's strongest voices for our middle class, uh, someone who is very authentic. Uh, he is who he is, and uh, you know when he speaks that you're hearing from his heart. Uh, but he's also got decades of senior experience in national security and foreign policy. So he does have the room uh, to make a decision that's really right for him and his family. Uh, it is getting late in the fall, and I do think we'll get an answer relatively soon. What is he saying about where he is in the process and why? Well, I think the vice president uh, is deeply torn. Uh, he is trying to honor uh, the wishes that Bo expressed to him in his last days. Uh, he's trying to respect the fact that uh, this is likely his last opportunity uh, to run for president of the United States, and he knows that he's got a remarkable record as vice president. He's been one of the strongest, most effective vice presidents ever. Uh, but I also think, um, as a father myself, that the depths of grief that I've heard from him and his family are just are stunning. And so the balance between what's right for him, what's right for his family, what's right for the country, uh, I know is weighing on him very hard. And we both know that Bo wanted him to run for a lot longer period than just at the end of his sure. life. Uh, so this is something the vice president was familiar with. All right, so you're saying we're going to find out soon, but we're not going to know today. Uh, all right, so let's talk about something else we don't know today, but is coming soon. Mm -hmm. When Hillary Clinton gets before that committee, this is going to be the big moment for them mm -hmm. to justify their significance now. Okay. As someone who understands uh, the foreign policy implications of what happened in Benghazi and what we know, do you believe that this is about evincing new information? Do you believe there is material unknown that can come out in one of these hearings? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I think they've had more than a dozen hearings on Benghazi in the House and the Senate, uh, open hearings, classified hearings, uh, and I don't see that this select committee on Benghazi has done anything other than waste millions of dollars of taxpayer money in continuing to grind over the same ground. When I was on the Foreign Relations Committee during the time that she was Secretary of State, uh, I, on several occasions, uh, got to engage uh, with then-Secretary Clinton, and she is a very capable, smart, uh, grounded uh, leader. She has an amazing record uh, as senator, as first lady, as secretary of state. I don't think they're going to trip her up or discover any big new surprise. I frankly think this is the worst sort of politically motivated fishing expedition at this point. Trey Gowdy could not disagree with you more, yes, Senator. He <laughs> says the reason we don't know certain things is because she hasn't told us. Uh, that there, there has been a blockade of information coming here. Mm -hmm. Is there any merit to that? Not that I see. Uh, in both open and classified sessions, uh, I've gone over the details of what happened. And although truly tragic, uh, the incidents in Benghazi that cost the lives of four Americans, uh, including our ambassador, uh, I don't believe have been uh, concealed through some uh, conspiracy led by the secretary. Uh, I think the real question ought to be, uh, why did the Congress not invest more in embassy security? Uh, why have we not yet fully uh, addressed some of the issues that were raised in the earliest and there hearings were reports about Benghazi? Issue. There were reports why issued did we not address those recommendations, reports? what you should do. The State Department adopted some. A lot of them have been left exactly. as open letters. Um, so what, what is the end of the day analysis, though, in terms of why did Benghazi happen and what do we do to make sure it happened again? Um, I think in no small part uh, we needed to invest more in embassy security and human intelligence and signals intelligence and in making sure um, that we had some, some tighter restrictions on ambassadors and on uh, station leaders who, although confident in their uh, assessment of the risk, perhaps um, 
we're overconfident. Was uh, there a big risk assessment that had been delivered and was ignored by the State Department? Um, there's some debate about that, whether it got to Secretary Clinton or not, whether it was ignored or not. There is a question, I think, that's been addressed, which is whether there was an available rapid response force that could have made some sort of a difference here. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think we as a Congress, a now Republican-controlled Congress, have not invested enough in improving embassy security and in training our diplomats who go overseas uh, to confront very dangerous situations. The answer can't be to have uh, every diplomat who represents us in difficult and dangerous situations uh, locked in a fortified embassy. Uh, the brave and capable people of the Foreign Service uh, go into tough countries to represent us knowing that there are real risks there, but we can and should strike that balance uh, more in favor of securing Americans overseas. So let's end where we started. How often are you getting on the phone with Joe right now? Um, not, not as often as I'd like. Uh, in the last few weeks... You wait for him to call? You, uh, you, at, you at this point, I, I had a couple of opportunities to be with him in person two weeks ago. Uh, but at this point, I think all of us who care deeply for him and who want him to run and who would support him if he ran uh, are giving him the space to make this very difficult decision uh, in the next couple of days or weeks. Do you think if Joe Biden runs, he wins? Um, I believe he will. Uh, I think he brings to the stage um, a different voice, uh, a unique set of experiences and a capability uh, that Americans are crying out for right now. They want authenticity. They want someone who understands their experience. And they want someone who's got the capability and the competence to lead. Uh, the meltdown we're seeing uh, over in the Republican presidential primary, uh, this latest fight uh, between Trump and Bush over who's responsible for 9-11, uh, I think creates a big opening. Uh, whether it's the vice president uh, or Secretary Clinton, uh, I think we will end up with a very capable, very strong nominee. Senator Coons, thank you for thank being you. on the show. Appreciate it. Allison? Okay, Chris, let's talk.